Hello everyone, I'm Kang Zhen from Ai Chongqing. Right now, I am at the CQUPT, the main gate, Tengfei gate of CQUPT, Chongqing University of Ports and Telecommunications. And I am thrilled to bring you an immersive campus life in CQUPT. And today, we are going to experience the unique charm of CQUPT, where technology and humanities combines. So, Get ready to enjoy yourself in this vibrant campus at CQT. So let's check it out. Actually, every time when I walk into the university, I feel that I'm getting younger. Yes, because it reminds me of the days when I was a uh, university student. So I can see those, yeah, those students very smiling and they are energetic and uh, dynamic. And today, as you can see, I wear a special color. Yes, it's carved with cartoon. Can you see? Yeah, I hope to use this way to show my young, to make me feel like more younger. And now we are on the way to the CQUPT History Museum. So follow our footage and we can see the campus. CQUPT is located in Nanshan. Nanshan is a scenic spot in Chongqing, uh, a scenic beauty, very So the natural environment of CQUPT is so charming. And now, look at my left hand side. You can see many university students are playing tennis. Yes. So there are four tennis courts. It's full of people. And right now is the right time of French Open. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I'm a 
big fan of tennis. So I really admire these international these students because they have uh, excellent tennis courts. And on the way to the Chongqing University of Post and Telecommunications History Museum, I'd like to introduce a little bit about this school. Chongqing University of Post and Telecommunications, one of the key posts and telecommunications universities established by the government, is a teaching and research university jointly built by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology of the People's Republic of China and the Chongqing Municipal People's Government, a first-class discipline construction university in Chongqing. CQUPT is located in Chongqing, the economic and industrial center of southwest China and the upper reaches of Yangtze River, covering 253 hectares of land with a beautiful environment and complete facilities. The university has 70 faculties with 61 undergraduate majors covering engineering, science, economics, management, literature, arts, law, and other disciplines. At present, there are more than 27,000 students including more than 5,800 graduate students. There are more than 2,100 faculty members in service, including more than 870 with senior titles and more than 900 doctoral and master's degree supervisors. Okay, now we have arrived at the Yifu Science Building. So the CQPT History Museum is located in the first floor. So let's check it out. And now we have arrived at the CQPT History Museum. And today we have a special and a professional guide to guide us our visit to help us have a better understanding of this university and the history of the development of the telecommunications industry. Hi. Hello, hello. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, could you please introduce yourself for us? Okay. I am the student volunteer commentator, Yifei Guo, and I'm a student in International College. Um, welcome to our school exhibition hall, and I will show you around the exhibition hall. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me. I will do my best to answer you. Yes, if you, so if, as for our audience, if you have any questions about this university, you could leave your comment and you may get a reply at the end. Okay, please. Now well, let's start this visit. Okay, when you enter the exhibition hall, the first thing you see is a map of China showing the eight vertical and eight horizontal optical carbon trunk network. These are the backbone networks of China communications. Their complexion has not only completely changed the, the backward situation of China's communication, but also like the lead foundation of the modernization of China's communication industry. In the 1950s, China has uh, established seven uh, post and uh, communication universities, and this is our school. Uh, these universities in major uh, administrative regions 
working together to form a shape of spoon. And I'd like to, I'd like to ask, uh, what would you associate with a spoon or a shape of spoon? Well, so <clears throat> look at this map. Okay, I don't know what our audience may think of this uh, this place. Well, as for me, I think it's more like a spoon, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, is so there is some meaning of this spoon. Yes, I believe uh, most of the people will definitely associate it with the Big Dipper. So let's look up at the top of the hall. These are the seven stars of the Big Dipper. It symbolizes not only the seven universities, but also the Beidou satellite navigation system developed by China itself. And in the middle of the hall is a school logo with stamps and information network elements gathered on it, symbolizing the distinctive characteristics of the university. And the pictures on the right show the development of postal services and telecommunications in the new China. 70 years later, China's postal and telecommunications industries have undergone rad radical changes. At present, China's telecommunications industry has reached a world-leading level in all aspects. Now please look to my left. The developed process of our university has always been closely related to the development of post and telecommunications in the new China. Our university, uh, our university was founded in 1950. At present, our university is complete with undergraduate, master, and the doctoral level of education. And at the front, the exhibition hall is on our wall. Our university has won many national awards. Among them, the TDSCD MA terminal core chip, which we often refer to as the 3G chip, won the uh, second prize of the National Technology Invention Award. And this is also the proudest achievement uh, our, of our university. And on the both sides of the honor wall are the school mottos. Now please let's uh, follow me to uh, look back at the glorious history of our school. Huangjueya, where our school is located, has a very long history. It has been an important road since the Song Dynasty. And this is a map of the Southern Mountains during the Second World, Second World War. And the former site of our school was the general post office of the Ministry of Transportation of the government at that time here. And we can also see that the Far East NT Facilities Command Center was uh, established here, not far from our school. So our school has a part of the heritage of the development of postal service. And this is also the reason why our school was built on the Southern Mountain. And this is the development progress of our school. And these are the leaders in the different periods. Now let's come to the first stage of the school's history. Uh, our school was founded in 1950. At that time, it was in a very poor situation as it only covered 6,000 square meters. And this picture shows the teaching and the office areas of the school at that time. Now let's take a look at the special exhibition of our first detector, Guo Changbo. Mr. Guo was an old Red Army man who personally experienced the long march and on his 80th birthday in 1996, uh, Mr. Guo politely declined the request of alumni and the teachers to wish him a happy birthday, but instead took out his own savings for many years to set up the Guo Changbo Education Award Fund which has uh, since helped more than 1,000 poor students to uh, success successfully complete their studies. Today, Mr. Guo def defines de dedication and uh, indifference to fame and fortune has become a banner of our school and also a, an example for everyone to learn from. Now let's come to the second stage. 
in 1959, our school was promoted to a new stage and began to enroll uh, undergraduate students. In the same year, with the cooperation of the teachers and students at that time, our school successfully built the first large scheduled building, number one classroom building, and these are the pictures of that time. Our school uh, started to train graduate students in 1963 and become one of the 10 schools in the province that had the right to recruit graduate students in 1965. And this is the first certificate issued by uh, our university. You can take a closer look. This one. And in the 1970s, due to the special historical background, our school experienced a period of difficult time for scientific refer, uh, research. However, the researchers and teachers have overcome the difficulties and successfully developed a series of high quality common, uh, communication equipment, which vigorously promoted the development of China's communication industry. It can be said that China's digital communication uh, went from to the whole country in that time. And therefore, our school is also known as the birthplace of digital communication in China. Okay, now let's come to the third stage. Thanks to the policy of reform and opening up, the school res resumed operation in 1980. And these photos are the scenes of the opening ceremony and other activities for the uh, first batch of students after the resumption of the school. Our school also attaches great importance to experimental teaching and is committed to improving the ex uh, experimental and practical condition for students. Uh, in, 19, in, 1970, uh, in 1987, our school purchased uh, S1240 program controlled switches for experimental teaching uh, and it's just over there, the blue one. Uh, since the 1980s, the university have developed a horizontal social research collaboration. Uh, have you ever tried the unique Yangtze River main roadway in Chongqing? Yes, of course. And uh, right now, the Yangtze River Cableway has become an image of culture and the tourism image of Chongqing. So it has gone viral on the internet. And it's a must go for, uh, for people who never been to Chongqing. And uh, the communication control system is used at that time were uh, developed by our school. Oh. Yeah. And our school also insists on industry university research cooperation so exchange to improve our teaching. And in the middle of the hall is a special exhibition on switches. This one? Yes. Okay. Uh, this switch exhibited her, including the S1240 mentioned above, were all designed, produced, or used by our university. Okay, let's come to the So I think this is a really uh, historical museum for telecommunication. Yes, yes. So the history of telecommunication is not only its history, but also the history of CQUPT. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, let's come to the fourth stage of our school's history. And with the arrival of the 21st century, our school had also entered a new period of development. Uh, this period, our school made the leap from college to university. And in 2006, our school was uh, officially re renamed as CQUPT. And our university also established the Red Rock Network School in 2000, um, which is now a popular platform for students to receive uh, quality educations, like the apps and WeChat small programs that we students usually use in our study and life are all developed by them. In addition, the all-round development of students is also what our university has been hurrying to. Uh, this is the scene where Zhang Yan, a classmate of our school, enters the stadium as a 
ceremonial detector of the opening ceremony of Beijing Olympic Games. And this section is about 3D chips. In 2000, the 3D standard developed with our school's participation, participation was officially adopted by the IC, ITU as an international communication standard, becoming one of the world's three major standards in the related field along with those of the United States and Europe. This achievement was a major breakthrough in the history of Chinese telecommunications. And in October 2005, the world's first TDSCD and main mobile phone-based band chip, Tongxing One, was successfully developed independently in our school. And this means that the key technology of China's 3G communication core chip has reached the, the world's leading level. Okay, after a review of the school's history, let's take a step together to uh, the uh, today's school. And here are the achievements of our university in recent years. Like in 2014, our university has officially enrolled students for the uh, electronic information engineering program in cooperation with the city of Northern Arizona. And in 2017, our university is cooperating with uh, Brunel University in the undergraduate education project of communication and engineering. And I am the student of this project. And here is a co comparison between the past and present data for our school. Um, the number of students and teachers has increased significantly. And we can also see that um, by 2019, the number of international students in our school is nearly eight times that of 10 years ago. Yes, so only 10, ten years, your school yes. has achieved great success yes. in international work. And uh, this section here shows some scientific, uh, scientific research achievements and awards of our teachers and the students in many fields and all aspects of the results have been studied. And as mentioned about our university attaches great importance to cooperation. At present, our university has established cooperative relations with many enterprise institutes at home and abroad. And at the same time, our university has been actively promoting open education to the whole. Now our school has achieved cooperation in teaching, research, and other aspects with Russia, Britain, America, and many other countries. Our campus has gradually become a place where people from all over the world exchange and learn together. Now let's step into the 5G hall and feel how 5G communication is our lifestyle. And this area is a part that visitors can personally experience. Uh, like this bag, you can have a try. Okay. Um, you can put on the VR glass. Okay. Edit. Okay. Then you can see our school's history like a 3D movie. Oh really? Let me yeah. try. <laughs> So I need to write it. Yes. Okay. Oh, I see the universe. So I start. You, you, yes, you continue. You continue write it. Then you can oh, see oh, it's the movie. It's movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The faster you write it, the faster the scene will change. Oh, I am enter in a channel, a tunnel. This yeah. is the beginning of our school's history. Uh, yes, I see the number. Yeah. 1950. The scene in the VR uh, glass is 3D, like a 3D movie. <laughs> a Although bit. we can see that, uh, but uh, uh, can see that in the VR glass. Yes, it's so vivid that uh, makes me feel dizzy. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, now we are going to 1959, right? Yes. Well, I see that this is energy consuming. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, it is, it still has uh, very much before uh, after this. So I think we can uh, go to the next part. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I see. <laughs> it's very impressive. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Question from the audience. Okay. So one of our audience want to know where are you? Is this the science faculty or? No, this is CQP's history museum. Yeah. So we can see the school's achievements and the glorious history of this remarkable university. So. Uh, okay. Now let's come to the uh, next part. This way. This is the alumni park. On the wall are some photos of our school's past alumni reunions and outstanding alumni. And uh, this computer over here can check the graduation photos of the previous graduation. Okay, so I can search for any graduates? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, let me quiz you. I'd like to search for uh, graduates, uh, graduated uh, in 1999. Okay, so we just need to click here and these are all the graduates in uh, from 19, uh, 1990 to 1999 and let's see about this. Yes, this is a graduate uh, of 1995. Five. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they, so, are, they are the uh, communication engineering. Yeah, I think this is a good memory for those graduates. Yes. And this is all for our school history exhibition hall. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, uh, if you still have any questions, you can ask me. Okay, so as for our audience, if you have any questions, let me check the screen. Okay, no, so thank you very much. Thank you for your insightful tour of CQPT's History Museum and your passion and your expertise thank you. have brought the history back to life. Thank so you. thank you. Okay, so that's the end of this part. And please stay tuned as we continue our exploration in this remarkable university. In the next part, we are going to visit the playground and the museum of CQUPT. So uh, if you have any questions about this school, you could leave your comment. Okay, so let's go. Wow, Natalia. Hello, hello. Nice, nice to, to see you, see you again. Nice to meet nice you. To see you. <laughs> yeah, so if you are a fan of our items in China, you may be familiar with Natalia. Hi guys. Yes, she joined the live stream of CQPT's admission info sharing before, right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. So today, Natalia will follow us to visit this remarkable university. So, Natalia, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm nice great. to see you again. Nice to meet to you again. So, do you have class today? No, actually, I do not have a regular classes anymore because I'm uh, the master's student, the second oh. year master's student. So basically, we're doing research and oh. we're visiting laboratory or going to the uh, library most of the time. 
or a meeting with our daoshi, with our supervisor. Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, there basically classes we don't have it. Uh huh. So what do you really do when you have no time? When you, when you have no class? Well, you we do, do research already. Yeah, to, of course. Like if you're done with your uh, paperwork and with the research, and for example, your supervisor is uh, actually said it's totally fine. You have mm -hmm. a free time and uh, we have a uh, plenty activities in our university it depends do you like sport or you more arty person so it depends totally depends on you oh uh, okay i think that's very uh that's a very free uh space for your study yeah 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 and uh, laboratory Be equipment careful. and library are very high tech you can one like to help you improve your uh, studying and your research. Okay. And uh, you know, I think it's aimed at the overseas audience. So I'd like mm -hmm. to ask you several questions. Maybe our audience uh, may be interested in. Yeah, sure. Okay. So the first one is as an international student. Mm -hmm. So why did you choose to study at the UPD? Um, because the UPD is a high level teaching and research university in China. Mm -hmm. So it was that kind of choice. And we have a really big and significant influence in the field of uh, telecommunication and information. And also our university to strive to build like talents and technology highland for the big data intelligence. Yes. So it's kind of easy choice. Oh, okay. So um, talk, let's talk about your university uh, sure. campus life. So sure. what's your favorite course in, at CQPT? The favorite course, as I said, uh, right now, we do not have a particular course uh -huh. and I totally focus on my research area. So uh, if you, for example, a first year student, uh, I'm doing my master, second year master. Oh, yeah. So uh, we like our course, it's totally different. We focus on our research. But if you're a first year or you have uh, um, a yeah, bachelor, so it depends what kind of major you have. So it's varies. Okay. So could you please share your title of your your proposal? Um, because I'm studying Chinese <laughs> in English, it's going to be um, artificial. How the artificial intelligence uh -huh. helps customer satisfaction <laughs> improve wow. in Saohongshu. Wow. So, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I think this title is really fun. Fascinating. It combines your major, but also combines the characteristics of CQPT. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not only we focus on marketing, we, and uh, but we cannot forget, we cannot forget our like special because our main research is uh, big data, uh, deep learning, and artificial intelligence. So every single um, research, and for example, my Tongshu, uh, my classmates. Every single paper and research have to include this kind of um, research area. Okay, so as an international student, what are your biggest difficulties to study in China or at CQUPT? And uh, how did you overcome these difficulties? Um, the hardest part, I think, is uh, language. Language? Yeah. Right. Your language is so, nah, but, so good. Uh, yeah, but it's sometimes it is so good in like daily life, right? Sometimes when we start to do the research area, it's totally different vocabulary. It's totally different thing that you have to understand in completely different language. Oh, so okay. the yes. vocabulary is really high level. So you, you nonstop have to improve your uh, Chinese. Okay. And uh, I know you have attended the uh, you know, shooting. Yeah. Yeah. On um, May, on uh, um, March. Yeah, I yeah. think it's the middle of the March. Yeah, yeah. So, could you please share your experience to be a female leading role <laughs> in Chinese movie? Yeah, it was really a totally different experience. I haven't yeah. had it before. Yeah. And when there, when you actually uh, were communicate, uh, communicating with me and said like you're gonna be the main role, I was like, I don't know, my acting skill maybe is not enough. But apparently, we need kind of share what this place is about and uh -huh. the best things. And I think we did a really great job to share like this beautiful place of that zoo. And yes. then the people who wants to go there and experience this beautiful place, they can actually 
check it out our movie please check it out <laughs> and they actually can know where to go where to eat how much is gonna cost yes. i think it's a it was a great job Yes, and uh, do you know that movie has got more than 10,000 likes on the internet? <laughs> I That's know, a big you, success. I know, I know, I know. So yes. We work hard for that, so. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think that also proves that uh, CQPT supports its international students to attend all kinds of social activities for to sure. help them get involved in Chinese society and to experience the Chinese traditional culture. For sure, for sure. And I, and I want to give an example, like a few weeks ago, we had an activity, we went to a um, tea plantation for tea picking, like, uh, for t uh, and that everyone, the guys, they were explaining us about like tea culture in China, which has a history of more than 1000 years. So like we were, all of us, we were fascinated how many steps you have to follow while <laughs> drinking the tea, yeah. because in our countries it's usually put it back right and just drink yeah. and here you have to follow the right hand should take this cup then you have to pour it you can't touch another things is it was really complicated and we were like just listening non-stop and they were like okay yes it's beautiful yeah and uh, as we can see on our left side mm. this is the playground of CQPT right. the name of the playground is Feng Yu playground yeah. yes we can yeah. see many students are doing sports there yeah the guys you, you come for example during the evening uh most of the students i don't know i think half of the students they are uh -huh. running around and it was like i think it's really a sporty community like compare if i compare for example in russia in the university i've studied before usually in the nighttime our like stadium will be empty but here every single night it's like people are just running around. Oh, yeah. wow, nice. And uh, I have to say that is a precious time to keep your body shape <laughs> in right, a good exactly. state. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And so what's your favorite sport? Uh, Do you often uh, appear on here. the playground? <laughs> no, I'm not appearing here, but we have a uh, uh, gym. Attention phone, right? oh, we okay. have a gym over, uh, over there. Like oh. we passed it already. So there's so, a gym at school? Yeah, inside the school. So oh, okay. uh, during the daytime, you can actually go and exercise. And there are lots of uh, people who like really enjoy it as well. So sometimes we do tennis. There are tennis, oh. bumping tone. It's like literally depend on you what you want to do. There are oh. plenty of choices. Yes. And I really like this lane. It's covered with big green trees. So follow our, uh, follow our camera. We could have a more beautiful picture. Yeah, I so, think, and one yeah. of the best things about our university is a campus. It's yeah. like literally you feeling like you live in the national park. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because it's a sunshine, right? It's on, kind of on the top of the mountain, so we have lots of uh, trees here. And during when the during the summer it's really hot, we still have a place to have a to find a shadow. Okay, and we can see many graduates are wearing bachelor's clothing right. and taking photos. Right. Yeah, so every June is a month of graduation. Right. Yeah, so I know you are in the second year of your mm -hmm. master's student as a master's student. So what are your plans after your graduation? Like, I still have one more year to figure out, but I think um, for now, I don't have a plan to like uh, to do my, for example, PhD. Okay. But uh, um, we I can think see the, uh... taking pictures. <laughs> yes, right? yes. Beautiful memory from the university. Yes, they could leave something at their best age. Sure. And now on our right hand, we can see a big logo, CQUPT, mm -hmm. and uh, the library is located there. Right, we have, like from the left on uh, the right side, it's a campus, on the left side, it's uh, uh, a big library that usually students are studying from the day to night. <laughs> okay, and I still remember when I was a freshman mm. um, at the university, as the first class, my tutor told me that there are two places I should spend more time. Mm -hmm. The one is the playground because it could empower me a better physical condition. And the other one 
is the library. Right. Yes, it could、uh, arm our brain. Yes. I think most of the like students are following your tutor advice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And now we can see a big poster, yeah. And、uh, we can see the school prints, the graduate's name on the poster, yeah. So we can get a close up. So we can name them Wu Dan, Zhang Yu, Liu Ziyi, Wen Lu. Yeah. So all of them on the poster. Yeah, I think it's like bachelor、yeah. students. Yes, I think it's、names. really meaningful. And now we are heading to the library. Okay, from the face of this library, I think it's a modern library. Yeah. So do you often go to there? Uh. <laughs> Yes, but actually, every single、uh, master student, while you're doing your research, you have your own space.、Uh -huh. So we can、uh, choose whether we want to go to the library or where, whether we want to go to、uh, the studying room that we are usually studying. So、uh, it depends if I need to go and find some books,、mm -hmm. which I, I need to for my research. Usually, you can come here. And our like、um, e version of library is also very good. So most of the books you actually can find online. Okay. And now we are entering into the library. So we can see these students are scanning their student card to enter into the museum. Okay. I will step into the library. This is a very spacious library, and it doesn't give me a a pressure. Yes, that's a feeling like other library. The strong light and the air put in, and there are a large collection of books. Right. Like this is literature, right? And、uh, so it depends where you're studying. You can find pretty much everything over here. You just,、yes. if you need help, you just ask the、um, the workers, and they will help you to find out. Okay, and there are some chairs for students to to have a seminar, have a meeting, right? Yeah, and if you're tired, you can just sit over here and with your notebook and just have a. Research, but in more relaxing way. Okay. So, what kinds of books do you like to read most?、Um, for now, I'm not like usually.、Uh, right now, it's just、uh, books which is related to my research, or the books which can improve my Chinese. So this <laughs> is、uh, right now. It's just two types of books. Okay. What about you? Me, I like to read scientific fiction,、mm. like、uh, Sanji Three. Body problem and the wandering earth.、Mm -hmm. Okay, and most of them have been adapted to a filmmaking, and、um, they have gone around the internet, especially popular among the young people.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, by the way, I have to say,、uh, the the parts of the scientific、uh, fiction and the scientific movie are based on the technology development, right?、Sure. Because it the provide.、Um, Solid theory basis for the、uh, imagination. Right, right. Yes. Okay. So that's the end of the library. Okay. Now we have to exit this place, but we don't have the student card. Yeah, we need to find. And we not only have a library; there are lots of libraries in、uh, uh, CQPC. So, whatever you feel to study, you're free to come. And、so、usually, they working.、Uh, I'm not sure, but I think till twelve, you can actually come and study. Oh, so, yeah. There are、okay. lots of、uh, time. Okay. Okay.
โอเคโอ้ sorry Okay, the teacher here does to get out of this library. Okay, so that's the end of this part. A big thanks to Natalia for sharing her campus life at the no city and the insights and your personal experience have have given us a glimpse into this vibrant campus. So thank you again. Thanks. Bye bye. bye bye. So that's bye -bye. the end of this part. And uh, please stay tuned as we're going to today's big issue, visiting the industrial internet of Sims Lab. So let's check it out. Because the campus is so large, so we have to take on the electrical vehicle to get there. And it may take us five, three to five minutes. And now we are waiting for the vehicle. Actually, some of our audience are saying hi to us, so maybe you can take this time to say hi to our audience. Okay, hello everyone, I'm Kang Zhen, and uh, besides me is Zhi Yu, we are from Ai Chongqing, and uh, right now we are at the campus. QPT, Chongqing University of Posts and Telecommunications. So as we have mentioned, the CQPT is one of the key posts and the telecommunications university established by the government. So I really, I really welcome all of you to get to know more info about this campus, to get to know more about this high level university. And we have already visited their history museum. Yeah. And the, their ground um, and yeah. their library. So, yes. And the next part, we will explore the industrial internet of Synth Lab. And uh, I can't wait to see what cutting edge products will be present today. Me too. Yeah. So, really um, I am curious about the scientific uh, uh, process. Okay, the, the car is arriving. Okay, please get in. Thank you. Okay. This is an uh, electronic one, so I think it's really eco-friendly. Yes. And uh, as our audience are enjoying the view of CQPT, I'd like to ask several questions about Zhiyu. Okay. So, Zhiyu, uh, what's your first impression of this university? Well, I noticed that this university, CQUPT, is located on top of a mountain, Nanshan Mountain. It's really kind of surprising, but also typical because it's uh, one of the significance, uh, the signatures of the city of Chongqing, which is a mountain city. And it really cools you down as, you, as soon as you walk into the campus because it really combines the ac ac academic as atmosphere as well as the natural environment uh, together. And I just, I think the university has its own aura and I really appreciate it. Okay. 
As for me, uh, the first impression of this university is its natural environment. Yes. Yeah, because it's located in the Nansan Mountain. So the air is fresh. Yeah, and uh, and uh, this in, this school is full of green. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that environment. It's refreshing, like the perfect Be summer vibe. Yes, I think it's an ideal place for students to study yes. and. Uh, And uh, okay, I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. So, what's the difference between CPUGP and the Royal University? Well, one of the most uh, biggest differences between CPUGP and my university is that uh, the campus of CPUGP is way bigger because oh. uh, <laughs> it usually took me ten minutes from my school gate to my faculty uh, by feet, but uh, the campus here is just way too big for you to walk anywhere. Uh, so that's why we're on this electronic vehicle. And I think that's one of the biggest differences. And the other one, I think, is the uh, architecture uh, designs. Because my university is an international studies university. So every building of every faculty or major, it actually reflects the uh, a cultural background, the characteristics of the language or the culture. But the buildings here, I think they are more cohesive. Uh, it gives you this kind of nostalgic vibe and really immerses you into the academic atmosphere. So are we, are we there yet? Yes. No? Okay. okay. So it's one of the stops. So I think these are the two biggest differences in my eyes between a CQUPT and my alma mater, I think. Okay. And so, and now you have graduated from school maybe four years? More than four years. More than four years. So if you have a chance to go back to your university, what uh, three things do you want to do? Three things. Well, the first, I think, is to to more exercises to build a strong body. <laughs> but we have this uh, physical access courses back in school, and I think I remember that I took ice hockey and some dance classes. But I now I think of it, I think that I should to take more classes, physical uh, exercises classes, and I also know that the PE classes in every university uh, actually changes every year. And I noticed in this playground of CQUPT, some of the students were playing. I think it's really cool because we didn't have frisbee back then. Oh. And I think it's really cool to keep up with the modern pace and to try more exercises. So um, that's my first thing that I would do. Okay. And the second, I think, is to uh, participate more in students' activities. You know, as a sophomore, I used to be a vice president of a students' club, Kunqu uh, Club, it's Kun Opera. Oh. You know, Kun Opera is actually one of the oldest Chinese yes. traditional operas. And it's really, I think it is amazing that you have the chance to, uh, to know some of the traditions, traditional Chinese cultures, in my international studies university and i just hope that i would have done more to promote this uh, traditional culture to the students <laughs> and the third one i think is to make more friends because shanghai is a really international city it's a metropolitan just like chongqing and i hope that if i had a chance i would make more friends not only the students in the campus, but also in the city, uh, to get more connected with the local culture. Okay, and now we have moved to another gate of CPUPT, and uh, the the street on the opposite to us is a street full of delicious food. Uh, ah. <laughs> I think we had a chance to try some of it last time we were here. Yes. Okay. And under that, under that, the food is named the Cholun Bing. Yes. It's really sweet. 
best way. Yeah. Yes. It's also a, a great part of being a student because you are <laughs> surrounded by really nice food and it's cheap and delicious. Yes. I think <laughs> that Natalia agrees with me <laughs> if she's here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now we have arrived at the experimental building. Okay, so we are going to explore today's big issue industrial internet of scenes lab. Okay, actually, I can't understand the name the name of the lab why because i am a graduate student, yes yeah. yes me too so it's really cool i i really i expect a lot from this part of the journey because we are both uh, literature and <laughs> humanity students and yeah. the science and the technology is just a new world to us and i'm excited to see some of the innov innovations and the create of this amazing university. Okay, I'm curious about uh, how this cutting edge technology have changed our lives. Yes. It's on the second floor. Oh, second floor. It's graduation season, I think. Yes. Yeah, graduates everywhere. So, Kang Kang, I know that you studied abroad for one year yeah. in the UK, right? Mm -hmm. So, did you have this graduation season, like the culture back there? Yes. How did you graduate? Uh, well, the requirement of our graduation is to get four uh, uh, credits uh -huh. and deliver uh, a proposal. Yeah, and um, I feel so pity that because the time of graduation in UK is November. November. Yes, but actually the end of our semester is the August. Oh. Yeah, so I missed it out. Okay, hello. Yes, thank you. Yeah, our lab is a key lab in the excelling in the industry internet of things research area and work this way. Okay. Uh, here is the award we have granted from the Chinese government. You can see the key laboratory of industrial, Internet of Things, and Network Control, Ministry of Industry, and so on. Okay. And here, this is one of lab of one of the lab rooms. Our student poster students work and study here, and this is the office of their supervisors. If they have the question, they can directly walk to their supervisors and uh, have troubles and discuss with them. Okay. Okay, please go to this exhibition room. Oh, it's really cool. Okay, now. Oh. point, Lisa point. I think we're still in that point. Uh, I, I, sorry, I found the data point. Okay. So this is the showroom of their laboratory. And as we can see, there are some videos okay, that okay. showcase okay. the Okay, this is some yeah. brief discussion of the our industry, Internet of Things lab. And this, please say that here is the 
some award uh, granted from the uh, uh, Chinese government, and you can see this is the recent years. And uh, this is the intelligent connected vehicle. You can see we have the intelligent and the autonomous car uh, uh, testing area in the Yubei area in Chongqing University. And uh, here is uh, our uh, autonomous car, you can see, and this is the robot, autonomous robot. Okay, please go this way. And uh, this is, you see here is the smart uh, manufacturing. And uh, we can uh, real time monitoring your, for example, the temperature, humid, and also the uh, people in the factory. And then this, all this information will upload to the cloud. And from the cloud server, we can see this information of the factory, and also we can control them. Okay, here is another system. This is a internet industrial internet control system for based on the SDN, which is software device network, and this is the sensors which you can collect the uh, humid and the temperature of the, uh, the this point area and the data will be collected from this switch and deployed to the this system so from this system we can also monitoring and controlling this is another system this is a time sensitive network because in some industry that time sensitive is very is uh, really important. So here is the uh, time sensitive network module. Uh, the, in with this module, we can control the data packet. Okay. okay, this way. This is one of the uh, our, our outcomes uh, focused on the industrial. Uh, uh, security because we, we know that the data and the some information in the, in the industry they are responsible to uh, make sure uh, the transmission so this is uh, one of the security system we have research and the product okay all the data uh, this is the kind of loader for safety management and this is the internet of things gateway for safety okay and this uh, this is another a system which collect all data from uh, the, uh, the 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 devices in the industry, and this is the uh, this is we uh, we want to testing whether the data are secure and uh, make sure they can transmit from one to one to the cloud. So this 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 is a kind of testing system for the uh, for the industry in that of things that work. Okay, uh, next one. This is the OID. Uh, OID management gateway, uh, which is responsible to manage all the data, and and it's a kind of translation system to translate the data from the industry and uh, translate them to the customers. Okay. And uh, next next one is our IP value network system, and uh, you know in the uh, traditional industry, the data are traditionally in the form of IPv4. Currently. All the internet are, uh, are using the IPv6 version to transmit data. So, uh, what the system this system is responsible to translate IPv4 data to IPv6 and then uh, upload them to the cloud to the internet. Okay. <clears throat> uh, next one, this one. And because for our lab is focused on the industry Internet of Things. And uh, for the traditional industries and manufacturers, the devices in their factories are um, relatively old. So what we do is to transform the old devices, transform the data to the our state, to the state of the art data, and upload them to the to the network and uh, to the cloud servers. So this is a system that update the old devices. Okay. 
So is this system still under developing or already put into yeah, practice? Yeah, this is already put to practice now. So a lot of factors have just by our systems. So could you name some of the projects or the the uh, companies' names for us? Because we we are not the, like the technology students. Most so. of the factors are in our uh, in Chongqing, mm -hmm. and of course there are also some many factors in the other countries and yes. the province. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, because it, because all, uh, the our our lab they are focused on the our state cutting edge technologies. So cutting if the okay foreign students, if you are have the <laughs> opportunity to work with us, you will learn and uh, work with us and set up our the, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's so I see you just the uh, from the history. Oh, so sorry. University History Museum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. You may see, you may just see in the History Museum that we usually have, have uh, get some uh, tens of uh, national technology development progress. This some awards. We know the awards are the most important awards in our country. And in fact, three of tens of the world are from our land. Wow. Okay, yeah, this, this is one, two, three. This is the four, it's the very top of us in our national. Yes, yeah. National Awards of Science and Technology program. Uh. And this is one of the top awards of our. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You must be really proud. <laughs> Besides these three national awards, we also have earned a lot of awards from the Chongqing government. Okay, these are the awards. And one and another. One important objective of our work is to put our technology to be standards. Yes. Yeah, you know, um, the standards is very important for the industry and for the manufacturers. So these our these are three of our outstanding yeah. international standards. Yeah, we have our lab. Yeah, this our lab already uh, conducted. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Oh, this is all the some patterns. Uh, these patterns uh, uh, come from the just you, the researchers you have seen in the in the works. Wow! Hi, Robert. Great validations. <laughs> okay. And here, here is in the century of the exhibition. This is our uh, outstanding outcomes. There are some trips. The, the trips are already equipment in the in the devices you have already seen. This is uh, th this is trips is made of our own, mm. yeah. So in fact, this this trips is uh, is focused on the to for the manufacturers to for their data for their internet of things to connect to each other and transmission data. So, okay. Well, okay. actually, self-made chips is actually one of the hottest topics. Yeah. yeah, in yeah. At least Chinese technology environment right for now. For sure, for sure. Yes. So, yeah, it's so, really so this is kind of top the outcomes of our lab. Wow. <laughs> okay. And this is Robert. And this. Hello. Is this like voice control or? Uh, it could be, but not not active right now. Wow, so cool! Yeah. So, what's the use of it? Uh, just uh, uh, it for localization and for detection. Ah, kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this cutting edge technology is really mind blowing. I think if you are, whether you are an international student or a Chinese student, uh, that you are, uh, as long as you are interested in technology, in telecommunications, in innovation, CQPT is actually a great place for you to discover more and to learn more and to make friends uh, with the shared dream uh, for you to improve yourself. And now, Kaka. Okay, okay, a big thanks to professors for guiding us to visit this core lab and your 
insights and insightful explanations and demonstrations have shed light on the cutting edge innovation the research happening in this field. So thank you again. Thank okay, you. thank you. Okay. So that's the end of this part. Bye. Hi, thank you. So how time flies. Actually, there are much more than today's pretty attention. And I feel so honored and thrilled to have this chance to share this info for our audience. And once again, I'd like to welcome all of you to get to know more about CQUPT, this remarkable university. And uh, I wish all international students at CQUPT could have a pleasant and productive journey at CQPT. And if you have any other questions about CQPT, you could visit the special website of CQPT on I Chongqing or at the official account of CQPT on Facebook or Twitter. So yeah, that's the end of our today's live and uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.